what's up, Bitter Brigade? It's Paul Sun Young Lee here, back in my geeky basement in Toronto, welcoming you to the 39th episode of Fun Boxing Sundays. Thank you so much for joining. It's great to be back home. Just wish I could be here under better circumstances. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I was supposed to be in Toronto. I was fully planning to do this episode at uh, the West Coast Stash House. And um, yeah, I was called home suddenly because my appa is not feeling well. Uh, and in fact, I wasn't going to do another episode tonight, but uh, visiting my dad, he was basically saying, hey, you've got your fun boxing channel tonight, don't you? Um, so you should do it, go do it, and I'll watch. So Appa, if you're watching this, if you're watching the replay, I love you. And, uh... you wanna get in, get in? Come on, you can get in. Um, <clears throat> so if I could get some support from my friends, just, you know, send all the positive vibes, good wishes, um, my dad's way. I'd appreciate that. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, wow, this is not, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. Sorry. Uh, it is, it's hard when you're at this age and you get to that point where your parents start to get older and stuff like that. So, Appa, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let's move on from this. Uh, I'm going to acknowledge the grief that I feel, but also the optimism because my dad started a new treatment and we're, we're waiting for that to kick in. And I'm sure that, um, you know, everything will be great. And so you keep fighting, Appa, keep fighting, and uh, I'll be right here for you. Uh, until then, um, just want to let everybody know... Uh, during these times, how important it is to me to be able to do things that make me feel normal. Like the other day I took uh, my, my son, Miles, to his baseball practice. And it was nice to be back home and watch him train. You know, it just felt normal again. And so these things like unboxing Sundays, fun boxing, these are things I look forward to that I really, really love doing. And I love sharing with this community. And uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody. And um, yeah, I got a couple of things here. Uh, back home, stinky dog. Podrick is right back there. I think he's happy. I think he's happy I'm home. You happy? Yeah, I think he's happy. Um, yeah, so we got some really cool things to unbox for you today. Uh, I got a hot toy, uh, of course. I got a bunch of hot toys back there. Uh, I've got a Denuo Novo Luke Skywalker helmet that I'm going to be... Uh, I've already unboxed, but I'm going to do a comparison and a review of that. And um, yeah, so I'm going to do some general half-assery, some drinking, some chatting, some healing, and uh, some fun. So, for those of you who are new to this channel, Forgive me, I'm usually not this emotional in that way. Uh, life is, is very interesting. Life is interesting. And uh, you know what makes it better is being able to hang out with your friends on a Sunday night and open toys and talk about shit. So, welcome to the channel. Now, uh, let's just uh, dive right into this and say hello to everybody who is here because I've been looking forward to this all week. So, Bad Wolf Media is in the basement as is as is Melissa K. Hey, hey. Cynthia Lynn is here. Tommy K is here. We've got Monstar 0305. Justin, how are you? Aaron S., my good friend. How are you doing? We've got Daniel Sertle who is here. Whether he's skipping work or just tuning in for fun, we'll know. Uh, we won't know. But uh, what we do know is he loves Brian Posen. Is that how you say his name? Posel? Pose? Pose head? Poser? I don't know. I don't know. He's a big fan of him. Apparently, I'm his, like, second or third favorite actor from The Mandalorian. And you know who the first two are. Christopher Colvin is in the basement. How are you, my friend? I hope you're doing well. Love what you're doing on your channel. I love seeing the progress on your DO droid. Uh, it's great. Anybody who's into droid building or 3D props making, check out his Instagram channel, uh, Colvin Creations on Instagram. Lots of fun, very informative, very inspiring. We've got Sean P, my brother from another mother in LA. How are you, my friend? The playoffs are starting. The playoffs are starting on Monday, and who knows? It, it all starts from scratch. So good luck to the LA Kings, unless they meet up with the Leafs, in which case, go Leafs, go. Uh, we have here, Thomas D is in the basement, as is Colin Hollis, my neighbor extraordinaire from down the road. Brandy Woods, artist extraordinaire from Montreal, how are you? Salut, uh, bienvenue. Um, sorry, uh, Anton Attard is here with us, how you doing buddy? Um, we also have, I'm just scrolling down, lots of great chatting going on, Mel Dade is here. Hey Mel, thanks so much for, for reaching out and your concern. 
Um, you know, it's just, it's scary when your parents get sick. It's scary. So I appreciate that support. Uh, Mike Wan is here too. Can't stay for the whole show, but he'll try and hope you got your drinks out. I've got my drink out. I've been doing a little bit of pre-gaming uh, before, so I'm, I'm going to slow down a little bit. And I've got this, this new drink called Fruit 2O, which is a sparkling, non-alcoholic fruit drink uh, with zero sugar. And for those of you who are new, I'm going to explain the drinking game in just a second after I say hello to everybody here. We've got Tom, 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 Tom in the basement here with us today. Hello, my friend. Love that name. Um, let me see. Global Health Science Institute from Southern New Mexico is here. I love saying that. I love saying hello to you. It's lovely. Absolutely lovely. Uh, Vanessa C., did I say hi to you already? I think I did. Uh, hello, everybody. My wife, Anna Lee, she's a moderator. Love of my life. Best thing that's ever happened to me. Welcome her to the uh, to the chat. She's moderating. I don't have to welcome her. She can ban me. Um, Joe Chufuk is here. Hey, Joe, how are you? Angela Lee, my sister, my Nuna, how are you? I hope you're doing well. Uh, I love you. Um, Robert Donatello, cheers from Oakland and hashtag the other side. Nice. Ryan Dole is representing SOC in the joint all the way from Vancouver. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're keeping your hands clean. Um, we also have here in the basement, Chris Christie. Welcome back, my friend. And uh, let me see, let me see. I'm just hitting these, hitting all these things. Country Boy 9 John. Hi, what's being open today? Well, we'll see. I'll, I'll let you know. I've got a hot toy, of course. The true, the TRU kid, the Toys R Us kid is here. Hey, welcome. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Pay 5 hello. How are you? Happy Sunday to you, my friend. Um, Soju bro, sup to you. Sup, sup. Val A is here in the basement. And we've got... Oh, boy. John Carmen is in the basement with us today. Hello, John. Uh, I'm getting a lot. I'm just getting to the parts where everybody's sending their, 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 their positive vibes. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It means a lot. Matthew Purdy is here. Uh, my good friend. Um, from Langley, you know, you know what it's like. Uh, Patrick, really vast, uh, really Vasquez is here in the house. Andy H, 1971, welcome. Joe Galati's in the basement with us too. Hip Hop to Miss Prime, Migel, Migel, Nigel. Oh my God, take a drink. Hope you're doing well, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Um, we got Charles Stevens in the basement as well as. The Fallen Fed. Hey, Aaron, how are you? You're cut. I love you. You're still cut. So cut. Uh, I'm that Psy guy. Hey, welcome to the channel. Looks like a new uh, new avatar, a new, new visitor, which is great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Owen Pang is in the basement. Uh, we also have Michael Lem Lemeza. Hello from Blue West Village. Right on. East End meets West End. West End meets East End. Tony Taylor is here. Thank you so much for the good wishes from my pops. I really appreciate that. Um... Uh, Le Monti, Le Monti, welcome, welcome to the channel, glad to see you here, Frank to Los Angeles, welcome back my friend, uh, I'm that side guy, I mentioned that again, I like that avatar, it's really cool, it's kind of like the eye of Sauron meets, um, uh, what is that called, not, what, what is it, what is it, uh, my brain's gone to mush, my brain has gone to mush, it's that, it's, it's kind of like a battle royale game, Apex, Apex Legends. I don't know, maybe not, maybe not. Yannick Freev is here. Hey, you're back. I hope you're doing well, my friend. I miss you. Terry Smith is here in the basement with us this week. Yoko McCann is here too. Hey, Yoko, how you doing? Um, Dylan Lambert is here. Hey, Dylan, I'm looking forward to this stream as well. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. Lucius Rees is here. Woo! Bilbo Baggins, wanting the ring back. Nice avatar. Digging that. Scaring the crap out of me. Even the Collector, what up with you, brother? Uh, Northern Nerdcast is in the basement with us today. We've got uh, Kenny C3. He's having dinner with his family today, but I want to say hello and send some positive vibes. Thank you so much. And thanks for the texts, Kenny. I really appreciate them. Keep sending them my way. Um, RMD Collective is here. Hello. I hope you're well, too. Um, and uh yeah we are we are cooking we're chugging along chugging along uh <laughs> yes it is the jamesons oh my god the jamesons sweet sweet jamesons oh baby anyways i think we're all caught up here welcome to the channel 
My name is Paul Sun Young Lee, but you knew that. Uh, for those of you who are new here, basically, all I do is unbox collectibles, geeky collectibles. I do a half ass review and we chat, and that's it. It's nice, it's fun, we have a relaxing time. There's some great members in the community here that are on the boards. Feel free to chat away. For those of you who are on there, though, we got 64 viewers, 30 likes. I found out recently that if you click more, the more likes I get, the more YouTube puts this stream in an algorithm so more people get to see it. So it would help me out tremendously if you could click those lights for me uh, and get a little bit more exposure to this channel, if you want. If you're not digging what you're seeing, absolutely, you don't have to. But as an ask, I'd appreciate that very, very much. Um, we have fun because we do a drinking game. Now, I am at home and I don't have my fancy overlay done. Again, <clears throat> I'm, I'm running on one camera. I'm kind of bare bonesing this tonight. Uh, I've been busy uh, with family, dealing with family things. So, uh, again, uh, forgive me, but we have a drinking game. And the rules are simple. Get a drink, any drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. It's a little bit more fun if you do, but it doesn't have to be. You could have coffee, tea, water, blue milk, pickle juice, vinegar, whatever floats your boat. Um, and whenever you hear me say certain phrases and they come up during the course of an evening, you take a drink. Like if I tell somebody like Tommy, Tommy K to everybody, shut up, then you take a drink. Or if I tell anybody to shut up, now it's all done in love and it's usually because they've outmaneuvered me or basically proving they're much smarter than me. So I tell them to shut up as a defensive mechanism, so you take a drink. If I get uh, upset about a mint in box collectible that isn't mint in box, that has a ding in it, that has a dent in it, you take a drink. If I get trolled by my wife, Anna, on this board here, because she's a moderator, you take a drink. If my boys, Noah or Miles, troll me, or if I troll them, you take a drink. If I talk about the resale value being higher or lower on a certain collectible, you take a drink. If I use the phrase, for those of you who don't know, you take a drink. If I mention how much I love instructions, and I do love instructions, you take a drink. And uh, basically, I think the biggest thing is if I need to take a bio break, and it happens because of the drinking, you got to finish your drink and then pour yourself another one. So those are the basic rules of the drinking game. We have a lot of fun with it, and that's about it. So um, that is that is one of the things that we're doing. Um, what else is there? What else? What else? Ah, merch. I don't have the fancy graphic. Uh, Mike Wan, my good friend, he made up this great overlay for it. You notice I'm wearing a bitter hat. Uh, I also have a represent hat. Uh, these are things that are on my website page. It's uh, bitterasiandude.com forward slash merch. I've been saying backslash the entire time, but it's like forward slash merch. You can check it out. Got these hats for sale. Uh, they support the channel. Any super chats, everything just goes right into the channel and uh, helps me provide some content for all of you. And I uh, really, really appreciate the love and the support. So these are the things that uh, people ask. For those of you who don't know, now you do. So I'm going to take a drink and I'm also going to say, shut up, Tommy, just for an extra one. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we're going to get going. We're going to get going because time is precious. And uh, I want to get cracking. Now, some of you might remember a few weeks ago, uh, back in the uh, uh, West Coast Stash House, um, and for those of you who don't know, I've been doing live streams from Vancouver and that lovely place have been, has been nicknamed the West Coast Stash House by Kevin, Kevin Wong from Toying Around. And um, so I've been broadcasting there and my geeky basement here back in Toronto uh, in East York. Anyways, a few weeks ago, I, was, I, I had a couple of hot toys and I, I left it up to everybody in the chat to let me know which one we should be opening. And uh, this one didn't. <laughs> this one didn't win. So I'm going to truck it out now. It's, uh, it is here. We've got Hot Toys 1-6 scale R2-D2. This is the deluxe version with all the doodads. All the doodad days. It's die cast metal. It's absolutely gorgeous. We're going to open this up tonight. Hello, Bricks and Sabers. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the channel. Uh, and so, yeah, we're, we're going to be opening up R2. Now, I don't have my fancy overhead cam. I don't have Boba, uh, little Boba cam. I don't have any of that stuff. So I'm going to be doing it old school style, and I'm going to be holding this up right here. Uh, this is great. This was a little bit harder to get. And on the heels of this, uh, side not Sideshow, but Sideshow will be distributing it. Hot Toys has announced it's coming soon to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Star Wars, Attack of the Clones, um, it's going to be another edition 
the, the 20th anniversary edition of R2-D2 and C-3PO. So I don't know if they're going to be putting them together in a deluxe package or selling them separately. They're probably going to do both. Uh, but I, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And it looks like I'm going to be getting a third version of R2-D2 on purpose. On purpose. Unless I pre-order him by accident a couple times, which happens every once in a while. But what can I say? Spreadsheets are for losers. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, here we go. We got... I got some chats here. I was, I was seeing here... Do, 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 Yoko, would that have to be our live episode? Uh, Yoko, of course, Kevin, Wong, and uh, Ernie, the Fallen Fett, uh, and myself. We are, of course, the Boba Squadron. Uh, we do a podcast. It's released every Monday. We have a lot of fun with it. Check it out on the Boba Squadron. Uh, there, whatever platform you choose to listen to your podcasts on, check it out. We talk generally Star Wars, pop culture, toys, and occasionally shunned topics like books and Star Trek. So check it out. We have a lot of fun doing that. And often we, we have homework assignments where Kevin usually has to watch a movie that it's kind of head scratching that he hasn't seen it yet. So that's that's the fun. That's the fun, that, that's the fun part of, of Boba Squadron uh, as well. Kevin's got also got his own channel toying around. Um, I guess I should announce this too. Uh, on May the 4th, I'm going to be on his channel toying around and we're going to be doing a simultaneous unboxing of a uh, Hasbro gift box, which has been sent to us to celebrate May the 4th, which is of course, Star Wars Day. May is the month of Star Wars. Uh, you name it, there's a May the 4th, May the 5th, maybe it should be, uh, it should be uh, Revenge of the 5th. It's Revenge of the 5th, but it should be Revenge of the 6th actually and i think some people actually do that you know it's 501st day on the 1st of may may 25th whole significance store celebration is happening which i can't go to which is driving me nuts but there there's that um <clears throat> so may is a very very big day and uh, before i continue on i got a super chat from my brother sean ten dollars thank you so much thank you for doing this week's episode brother the bitter brigade nation love and support you angie nuna and your family Whiting. Thank you so much. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> but getting back to Star Wars. Yeah, so May 4th on Toying Around, about 7.30 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be unboxing some cool Hasbro stuff. So tune into that. May the 4th, that's Wednesday. And also for you Canadians, for the Canadians, and maybe some of the Americans, uh, I will be appearing on Q, the show that is uh, broadcast by CBC. It's a radio show hosted by Tom Power. And I'm actually going to be doing... A live unboxing with Tom. He doesn't. He's never unboxed a hot toy before, and I'm actually going to be bringing some Star Wars stuff in for us to open up and geek out over. So tune in. It's going to be again Wednesday, May the fourth. CBC Q. You can go get it on Gem. You can log on to CBC Radio. You can listen to it live. Ten o'clock uh, is when the Q starts, and of course, at seven thirty. Uh, that night, you can also tune in to Toying Around and watch Kevin and I unbox some toys. Um, <clears throat> oh, that's a, this, is, this is a really nice thing that Daniel says for once. Uh, he is not a podcast guy, but for real, you four have good chemistry, and I really enjoy it. That is high praise coming from a man who loves Brian Posen so much. Posen? Posel? Posehead? I don't know. Poohead? Brian po No, anyways. Thank you so much, Brian. I appreciate that. Uh, and we have a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun doing that. Um, Louis Miguel Font Fontalera, hello to you. I hope you're doing well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we go. Nick X Dillinger, Posein. That's how you say it? I like Poser better. Just, just, just trolling Daniel. Just trolling Daniel. Uh, <clears throat> oh yes, that's right, Ryan. Hasbro Star Wars Fan First is also on the 4th, so check out their channel, Hasbro. They'll be there as well, so you can see all the, the, the fancy drops and the new toys that they're going to be going with. And, um, hey, Sam! Sam, the new Sam, you're going to be at a wedding on the 4th, but you can catch you on, if you can catch the unboxings, you shall. Good. Good. Very, very good. All right, uh, well, let's get to this then. I've got this box that I'm going to open on my chest, apparently. Now, <clears throat> Hot Toys, it is a 1-6 scale figure. Generally speaking, the uh, the figures are about 12 inches. Um, 
for the for the for the human humanoids. Uh, R two D two. He is not the size of a full human being, so he's going to be less than less than twelve inches. But you're going to see the scale and the detail of Hot Toys, which are tremendous. And again, if you this is a half-ass review. This is even half of a half-ass review because I don't even have my other cameras set up here to do the overhead shots. So you're not really going to get a chance to appreciate this very much. But if you want to tune in, watch watch Terry Smith's channel. It's incredible. Uh, he does proper, and I mean proper, unboxings on his channel with Sideshow. Uh, he and Guy Kalender as well. They do previews of the new figures that are coming out from Hot Toys. They are chef's kiss. That's the pros. I am but a poseur myself. A posen? Maybe I'm a posen. Um, and uh, I, I, I love, I, I'm just a collector and a nerd and I love doing this stuff. So this is it. We're going to, now the thing is, with hot toys, see, I'm getting sidetracked already. <laughs> I'm like, left, right, left, right, I'm getting pulled in a million directions. My head, it is spinning. But the thing about hot toys is the presentation of the boxes are gorgeous. And as gorgeous as they are, they scream, open me up and look at the figure inside. Take the figure out and display me. Now, if you look behind me, I have a number of hot toys that are on display and this is just a fraction of what I have. I've been away from home for six months. Slowly but surely, I have a whole stack of hot toy boxes here in the back room behind the monitor. I think I have close to 30. Um, and yeah, like this is this is a passion that I've fallen into. One six scale collecting. And when we open this up, you will see why. Uh, hot toys, their boxes, their packaging. They've got the two-tone black and gray. Very, very stylish. Got a picture of the actual figure in the front. Uh, beautiful, beautiful sort of embossed lettering on the front. And the thing that sets Sideshow apart from the other boxes are it's got that cigar band. Uh, really, really nice feature on the display. On the display, on the box itself, the box art. You can see, let's see, okay, focus. There you go, R2D2. Now this is an actual picture, not of the astromech droid one-to-one. -one. This is a picture of the figure itself. And it's really quite lovely. I mean, the presentation of this box, 10 out of 10. They've got the nice little hologram on the back to show it's, it is legit. They have all the credits on the back, as well as a warning, small parts, do not, Swallow because of me. They have a warning uh, is all I'm gonna say so so that's the box itself It's 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 pretty dope. It's pretty dope now. These usually come in a shipper box and uh, <clears throat> Like this to protect it when it's being shipped and uh, For the most part it works and if you're ever gonna resale resell these things uh, You'll find you'll you'll need to take a drink because I'm talking about the resale value uh, the lovely thing about Hot Toys is they retain their value. So they don't ever drop in terms of price. You'll always be able to get, at the very least, what you paid for back, including tax and import fees and shipping and blah, blah, blah. You'll make that back. But the lovely thing about these things are they appreciate in value because they become harder to get. And they'll do the occasional re-release, which is awesome. But these, are, these, these really do appreciate in value. So Noah and Miles, this is your inheritance. When I die, you don't give it away. You get it appraised, you get your money. Okay? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, and you gotta take a drink. Everyone, take a drink. I'm gonna take a drink because, uh, damn, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. There we go. Oh, and uh, for those of you asking, this is an orange mango. Orange mango. Mmm. Needs more vodka. Anyways. So that's it. Uh, <clears throat> and Hot Toys is just one of a few companies that are getting that 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 uh, that do one six scale figures. Uh, there's QMX. They do figures or uh, XO six. There's a whole bunch. They do Star Trek as well. Um, they do. There's Marvel SH Figure Arts. They I think they they're they're dabbling in one. I know they do the the uh, one twelfth scale, the six inch figures. But I think they're starting to get into the supersized ones as well. And, you know, that's it's great. One six scale is where it's at. And um, you can see the evolution of action figures because way back in the day, they used to be all the 12 inch, like the G.I. Joes. And they looked like dolls because the clothing was all like doll like and it wasn't fitted and the material was really cheap. But you can see the evolution of how they got incredibly good at the soft 
goods and the fabrics and making them look like actual little people instead of dolls. So, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> there's that. I'm gonna open up this box. Here we go. All right. And of course, we have the insert. And again, this is a beautiful action shot of the figure itself. You can see already some of the uh, some of the accessories that come with it. This is the deluxe version, so I expect it to be fully loaded. Um, but again, this is not a screenshot from Empire Strikes Back. This is, you know, it looks like he's on Dagobah, but it shows you what you can do with one six scale if you if you want to get into toy photography. And that's the other lovely thing, is it inspires you. I've seen a lot of fantastic one six scale uh, phot photographers. Do something, Terry Smith. I know, it's like, Terry, you should be paying me a promotional fee. He's an outstanding um, photographer, toy photographer. Check out his Instagram page as well. I mean, he, he dropped this, he showed me this one picture of the uh, Imperial Scout uh, troopers on their speeder bikes. Done, done. That was amazing, that was amazing. Uh, so that's, that's the insert. Let's there, take that out. And, oh no, oh my God. All right, <clears throat> here we go. Look at all of these accessories here. I'm gonna to try to angle it so that the light doesn't blind you all. You will see how many arm, look at, look at all the different add-ons for R2 there are, it's nuts. Uh, you've got Princess Leia, the two holograms. You've got the, the power charger, the cable. Uh, you've got a little dais where I'm sure you can set Princess Leia, who I know lights up, but this right here is what scares the crap out of me. Batteries. That's my nemesis, batteries. I still haven't found the battery that got lost in the, the speeder bike. Why? 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 And they're like different size batteries too. Like you've got the big batteries all the way down to the teeny tiny ones. I'm going to need my special glasses. I'm going to need my special glasses. And you're all going to have so much fun laughing at me. Uh, so this is the clamshell. This is the clamshell. I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the plastic one off. So you can get a better look at what's going to drive me crazy. Here we go. So it's a bunch of little trays inside, right there. And it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen different armatures. Thirteen different armatures. You got the little. Oh shit. Yeah. That was smart, dumbass. <clears throat> right there. Come on, focus. You've got the little data disk. From Rogue One, or what Princess Leia used to slip all the Death Star plans onto. Restraining bolt. You got Luke's lightsaber. Pizza cutter. Uh, zapping arm. This looks like a, this is the data port. Uh, this is a welder. Again, this is his radar dish. These are arm extenders, it looks like. Uh, grabby, arm grabby thing. Come on, focus, focus, there you go so many different accessories. I wish there was some way they could tell me what what each of them did or how they go in and oh, oh my god everybody get a drink ready. Yeah. Instructions. Love the instructions. This is what you need. And you're right Robert this one does have a very high retail uh, resale value. Uh, it's it's it was hard to get. It's hard to get, and that's what makes it a true collectible, is once it's released, uh, and that first and second run is done, the aftermarket for these is pretty expensive. Now, the re-release of another, other iterations, you know, do bring it down again, because people are like, well, I can get an R2, like the new Hot Toys one that's probably going to be coming out in 2024 at this rate, but you never know. But uh, here are the instructions. Oh, oh you know, it's that... Ben Mendelsohn, that bit in Rogue One, when he's as director Krennic, he goes, oh, that's beautiful. That's what this is. Beautiful. Restraining bolts, 
looks like it's it's got places for batteries where to put the batteries how to use a restraining bolt as a little magnet to open up those hidden doors each of these accessories comes and is placed in its own little way the data disc how how to slide that in how to hide the lightsaber and the uh the radar uh no sorry the the eye port how to bring down the third leg look at that look at that that's you know the movement of the uh the droid uh floor pads and more batteries where to put the batteries in and it looks like there is oh yeah oh yeah remote control r2 d2 uh is has a remote control now for those of you who remember when i did ed 209 the robocop it was the same thing it had batteries for remote control so you could actually they're, they're actual programmable sounds so this r2 not only lights up uh it has sound and remote control sound too uh this is this is this is boss this is dope let's do this look at that come on focus princess leia two different versions the standing help me obi-wan kenobi you're my only hope and the oh, someone's coming i've got to unplug one right there look at that and what i love is i don't can you see it it's the lines the holographic lines the layer lines of leia I love that and I, you know the these parts there they are translucent so when they light up and they're hollow so when they light up I bet they look super dope I'm gonna have to get my special glasses out to check these out here Ooh. okay well all right let's start far let's stop farting around and really let's let's go for the money shot here because this is we're all waiting to see r2 r2d2 out of the box oh oh that's tremendous so first things first it's heavy it's heavy because this dome die cast metal this is metal it's not plastic made to, to look metal this is metal look at the shine and you can also see the weathering this isn't sparkly brand new r2d2 this is r2d2 who's been through a couple of firefights there's a little bit of carbon scoring on him right is he as filthy as dagobah r2 no but uh he's he's been through he's 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 been used look at the look at the detailing on the paneling and on on his on his legs i love that Look at that. That's super dope. That is really, really cool. Love that. And the third leg pops out. It's much like there you go. I have a sideshow I have a sideshow version of a deluxe R2 down there, right behind me. It is not uh <clears throat> die cast, but it's beautiful. Here, I'm just gonna, and the, the, the third leg pops out, just clicks in, clicks out, and then you can just pull it down so you can have him posed. Um, I'm just going to, I just wanna grab the other R2. Don't you fall. Hey, Podsy. What's up, bud? I'm just gonna grab. So here's the Sideshow Deluxe R2. You okay? It's Podrick. He has no job, does no work, pays no rent. It is in fact himself something that costs money. And he just sighed. Life is hard. So here they are side by side. Come on, come on. Focus, focus. Don't look at, there we go. So this is Sideshow and this is this is the hot toys and you can see just right off the bat just off the bat right here you can tell this is this is a it's lovely but it's a it's not metal well there you go and it lights up too but no sounds from this r2 no sounds 
it lights up, which is super dope. This R2, I, I just like, it's the metal. I love the die cast metal on it, right? I can't wait to see what it sounds like to see. I literally just said, I can't wait to see what it sounds like. Send help. Send help. Good Lord. Um, and this is, of course, this has got some heft to it. This is heavier. This is much heavier. Uh, probably because of all the electronics inside of it, too. And this one has all the accessories on it. Now, the cool thing about the Sideshow R2-D2, it actually comes with, and now that I have two R2s, I can put it on him. He comes, this R2 comes with the uh, the tray uh, accessory on Jabba's sail barge, where you could, he has all the, the, the drinks and stuff set up. So now I can mount that to this R2 because I have another one that I can put all the other crazy doodads on. So that's pretty fun. Uh, I'm gonna put you here. Now don't you go running off looking for uh, Obi-Wan, okay? Because I got that restraining bolt on you this time, right? See, smarter than Luke already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, wow. This is pretty dope. This R2. My favorite astromech. My favorite astromech. Now I said astromech. My favorite droid, I think, is still K2SO. R2D2, of course, nostalgia, uh, nostalgia favorite for me, but um, K2SO just for his sass and his homicidal sort of streak to him. So I love that. Uh, let's look at my god should i try it should i try to put the batteries in the sucker this is not going to end well yeah sure let's do it let's do it so r2's head comes right off according to the instructions his head should just lift good lord and it did it comes right off nice and simple easy peasy lemon squeezy and now on the other side that's pretty cool that's a don't and this is God, God, this is heavy heavy you've got come on where's battery ports right there you go battery ports so i'm gonna need my special glasses and a screwdriver so i left a pair of my special glasses back in vancouver but luckily haha -ha, i have another pair of special glasses to help me see that's that that is that is literally what they're for Woo! i'm feeling kind of dizzy okay so we've got i've got to remove this is the other nice thing about being home i got all my stuff right in front of me where i where i know it it is west coast stash house i'm always looking Woo! i flew off Yeah, you should get a pair of these, Ernie. They are dope. Tom, 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 Tom. Does it have the lightsaber? Yes, it does. It does indeed have the lightsaber. Oh, would you look at that? It takes so much power, you need four. Five batteries. Five. Five go in here. Five. So we got three of the, AG, the LR44. Yeah, five LR44 size batteries. Okay, well, and look at that. There happen to be five right in here in this little battery tray. Pray for Mojo. My biggest fear is that it's just going to fly out and go. Wing or lose, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're enjoying your time. Okay, here we go. Why do they do this? What? Why must they make these things? Uh oh. So one thing I did notice here, there's already this corrosion on one of these batteries. Straight out of the box. It is, can you see it? That's corroded right there. This one right here is corroded right there. 
So I'm going to have to replace that. That is a 194 LR936 battery. Pretty sure I have those lying around here. So that, that won't be too bad. If I was in Vancouver, I'd be like, why? But since I'm home for now, I can put them in. Last one, easy, easy. Okay, it's in. What did Tommy say? You can just swap out that battery with the one that came with the speeder bike. Oh wait, shut up Tommy, shut up everyone take a drink Val what are you laughing at ha 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 yeah it's always funny when Paul gets posterized by Tommy that's why he needs to shut up all right I'm gonna put these back in now I saw a comment uh, from somebody about cheap Chinese batteries leaking and ruining the toy uh, all these batteries are made in China hate to break it to you. So the one thing that you need to do always with any toy that you have with any kind of battery is to check it, check it for leakage. And if you're not gonna be using it for a while, take the batteries out because all batteries after a certain point will leak and corrode and stuff. So point taken, there you go. So that's there. So you're in. So R2 has his batteries. Oh, did I switch it on? No, of course not. Why? Because that'd be, that'd be too simple. Oh, here's another. If I use the term, nothing can be easy. Take a drink, because nothing can be easy. And yeah, it helps if you turn it on. And so now I've turned it on. There you go. You are on. The batteries you are on. Now let's get some, put some batteries. It's sad, I need these to read the instructions too. 936 three yep and then the battery that's corroded is the one that I need for this so I'm gonna look here luckily I have my handy battery extra spare battery case Yes, I am doing quite well so far with the batteries. LR396. Yes. Yes. Was everybody betting against me? You're smart to do that. I bet against me too. There we go. See, these ones aren't bad. It's the teeny tiny ones. The teeny tiny ones. Ha ha. <laughs> Should we start a pool? What do, I, what do I win? If I can get this connected and going without dropping the battery or losing one? What do I... Oh, wait a minute. This one has signs of corrosion as well. As does this one. Okay, so I'm just basically going to swap out all these the batteries that are here because they're garbage. 
and uh, I'm gonna open up these ones a little bit more so that's a good tip for all you collectors out there check the batteries before you put them in the uh, the batteries that I put The batteries that I put in before, they were clean. They were clean, so it's not a problem. But uh, on closer inspection, these other ones, uh, not so much. Not so good. Not so good. Get out. Oh, come on. I dropped one. Take a drink. Yuck it up. The son of a bitch! Uh, that's another one. If I swear, take a drink. Damn it. Come on! <sighs> Damn it. Okay. 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 So this is on. This is on. Hello? Ooh, lights up. Ooh, another light. Oh, look at that at the back. Ooh. I don't think there's any sound. I think it's just the lights. Just the lights, no speakers. Still, that's nice. That is nice to be able to. So all the lights light up. There is sound? I don't hear it. I, there's no sound coming from from uh, R2. Do I need to put battery somewhere else? Let's check. Three more batteries in the case. Maybe I need to put more batteries in. One, two, three, one, two, three. Three more. No. So the little LED, where is it? Where's the case? Now? So I put it. One of the, uh, this lights up. So some of the batteries for this light up. So you put two of the tiny batteries in there. So you get that nice little glow. And this holographic base lights up. And I'm seeing now somebody say, hit the R button in Star Wars. I was hitting the R button. Then the W. Oh, the W button. It was a W button. All right, MDOS23, thank you so much. Thank you.
Okay. That's dope. That's... <laughs> How could you not love this? How could you not? That's incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. There, There's at least... I mean, there's... There's a lot of sound samples too. I mean, I heard the the I, I heard at least at least seven or eight. Thank you, Mike, for the super chat. Ten dollars. Time to order sixty six those batteries. I will. I'm gonna make sure they they get uh, properly recyc recycled. Um, but yeah, I mean, and again, this was I bought this. This is an aftermarket purchase. Uh, this was where did I get it from? I I got it via. Did I get it? No, 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 no. I got it on um, on another website that sells uh, hot toys. So uh, yeah, this but this isn't. It's not available. It's not readily in stock. So you got to go to these aftermarket sort of sites to get them. Uh, eBay is another one too. And uh, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I I love. I mean that the this. They both light up, which is great. This has got heavy weathering on it. Right, the sideshow one lights up, looks dope, fairly static. Uh, if you want to look at the compare the the lights on the back as well. Right, just as dynamic. But what pushes this one over the edge? Obviously, other than the die the diecast metal and the lights. And the remote control, which I've misplaced already. How the hell do I lose that? There we go. Is and then, and this is a right the sound that right there. It's like the uh, the the Iron Man, the arc reactor that I had from before, right? Like it's great. The static hero collector one is great, but at the very least, you need it to light up. And you know, if you can get it to make noise too, boom. That's that's incredible. This is a look at that. Love it. Love it. Um, so many different collectibles. Uh, uh, sorry, accessories on this collectible, which is amazing. Uh, somebody asked about Luke's lightsaber. Try to remove this tray without everything jumping out all over the place. Thanks again, Mike, for that super chat. Ten dollars, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, for everybody, these super chats they go right back into the channel. They don't go into my pocket. Uh, we use it to to, to help to do things like mail out uh, prizes and uh, you know get a couple of these really super cool collectibles. I'm gonna pull out the lightsaber for you. Now here's where I would use. My overhead cam, but I don't have it set up, so I'm just gonna have to do this. Look at that. One six scale, Luke Skywalker, Return of the Jedi, lightsaber. Look at the detail on that. Even the little switches on the side. See that red and green arrow? The red and green? Right there? <laughs> Can you see it? That screen accurate. Like that's crazy insane detail. Crazy, crazy, crazy insane detail. Right? And even the little the hook. Who does that? Who does that? I'll tell you who. Hot toys. Hot toys. That's why a lot of cosplayers, I'm not kidding, they will use hot toys, these these one six scale figures to figure out how the soft goods work. How the costumes are put together. That's that's pretty cool. Right? And this is yeah, this is an older release. So that's why. But look at look at some of these. These are like his extended grabbing arm.
Don't tell me you don't think this, this thing could totally pinch you. Grab what you want. The saw, we've got, look at that. He's got his, his torch. Look at the detail on that. That's incredible. And the paint app for something that tiny. That's nuts. Absolutely nuts. We got a super chat from Val. Thank you, Val. $10. Maybe mention casually to your sideshow friends to get a chopper out. Yeah. You know, if it were up to me, totally would. Oh, you know what? And these are magnetic. So when you're placing them, on the R2, you don't have to worry about them. They, they'll lock into place with the magnets. So smart. Uh, Sideshow, they do their own uh, in-house sculpts. And so, yeah, Sideshow. All you fantastic artists out there. Just saying, Chopper would be nice. A Chopper would be nice. For those of us who like Chopper, he's okay. He's okay. Thank you so much, Val, for that super chat. That's really, really cool of you. Appreciate it. Uh, Tommy's asking, does a remote shoot it out of R2's head? No, there are limits to technology. And, uh, like you said, maybe if you're into the character more and you would invest in him. So you're gonna have to find that out. You know what I want to try, though? This is what I want to try. I want to try lighting up this base. I want to put Leia on it. And I want to see... Where are my glasses? Oh, here we go. I want to see what Leia looks like all lit up. So let's do it. Let's do it. King Dog's asking how my day is. My day is better now. It's been a hard, it's been a hard week. It's been a hard week, to be honest. Uh, my dad is not well. And so I came home to see him and be with him. Uh, he started a new treatment uh, for what he's got. He's got a, hold on a sec. Let me just double check this. His body's having difficulty producing blood properly. And so he's anemic and uh, very weak. So he started a new regimen and we're hoping that it will perk him up. But he's very tired. And uh, yeah, so I'm, we're all rooting for him. Um, it's hard because he is, he's my dad. He's my dad and I love him. And, uh, you know, uh, everybody loves Kim's Convenience. Everybody loves Appa and Kim's Convenience. And I believe they love him is because one of the bigger reasons they love him is because I based my character, Appa, off the best qualities of my dad. So, if you love the character that I play, you love my dad. Because he's the best, best part. I got the best parts of him. So, I'm going to put these tiny freaking batteries in here. Why do they make them so small? Why? To bring me to despair. These are the size. And hey, there weren't batteries for that sideshow, for the, for the speeder bike. It was a magnet. Those are magnets. Tiny little friggin' magnets to bring me to despair. Come on, son. <sighs> this might, uh, this might be the end of me. This might be the end of me. I'm getting texts from my wife. We got some more super chats coming. Do we have to? Franz Francos? Oh my gosh, 35. Thank you so much. Paul, you're awesome. Can't wait to see you as Iroh. <laughs> Thanks so much. I appreciate that. Um, I'm really excited about it too. Uh, I, I, I'm really loving the work that I'm doing on the show. Uh, I love the cast. The, the scripts have been amazing. The directors have been great. The producers, everyone on the crew. Uh, 
it really has been a dream job, you know, and, and uh, this is like to be a part of something like that as well, because I'm a fan of the of the original animated series too. So come on. So it's it's very it, it's good to see people excited about it, and uh, and they should be excited because the stuff that I'm seeing is is mind blowing, and uh, oh man, the the urge to share pictures with all of you because the sets are beautiful the sets are beautiful it's incredible so yeah you could uh yeah you, you'd really you'd be blown away by them so yeah i'm i'm, I'm really looking forward to it uh, as well so thank you so much for the super chat that's so generous of you francos i really really appreciate that thank you um just reading so everybody's made give us the chopper the arnold schwarzenegger uh <laughs> quotes because of asking sideshow for chopper uh alex eagleson thank you for the super chat you're writing thank you for sharing cool content all the time uh, i wow thank you I, I appreciate that i appreciate it uh and I'm, I'm glad you're choosing to watch this you know that's it takes two people to have a conversation right it takes two and and this community that is just sort of sprung out of not nowhere, but it's it's lovely to connect it with all of you on this because um, it's always a treat when you when you meet like-minded individuals, right? And uh, you know, nerds and geeks of a feather flock together. So this has been great. Um, got the batteries in. On, and they don't work. The batteries don't work. Are they? Is it because they are? Oh shit! It's because they're old. Did I put them in backwards? I bet. Who's want? Who wants to say? Who wants to say? Who's gonna? Let's, we got a pool. Who's gonna say what it is? Did I put in the batteries wrong? No, all the batteries are in the same way. And they're stuck. Because nothing can be easy for me. No, they're all the right way. Hold on a second, hold on. Thank you so much for that super chat, Alex. Does it activate when you put Leia on it? I tried. I tried. Oh my God. I suck. I'm just checking the batteries now to see if there's any corrosion on them. I don't see any corrosion. The contacts look good. Get in. Okay. In. on oh, oh there you go now it works i don't know what i did i don't know but here we go here we go Just something because nothing fuck off fuck off Try this. There we go. Get 
that's that's pretty good. Maybe if I turn off this, some of these lights, let's see if we can get. There we go. That's the money shot right there. That's what you want. Oh, princess. Come on, let's, let's try the other one. Crouching princess, hidden dragon. There you go. So that's Princess Leia. All right, all right, all right. What are you saying, Tommy? That Leia looks like you bought it from the Vatican gift shop. Shut up, Tommy. That was so funny. That is funny. All right. I'll allow that. I'll allow that. But y'all got to take a drink anyway. Because I told Tommy to shut up. Her butt is glowing. What did she eat? Rebel rations. I'm telling you. Gotta watch out. Just because she's royalty doesn't mean she's above, you know, having to sling, sling some of that rebel, rebel food there down her gullet. I don't know. Not some my butt glowed like that. Ooh. Got to stay away from the bathroom for a week. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, we had a super chat that I think I missed. Uh, from earlier on, from my friend Calvin, uh, sorry, Christopher, Christopher Calvin. Christopher, thank you for your super chat. He says, thank you so much for being an inspiration for positivity. I uh, appreciate that. Appreciate that. I try. I try. Uh, it's better to stay positive than to be negative. Sometimes it's more fun to be negative, but in the end, uh, negativity doesn't help just doesn't help so uh thank you so much for the super chat and thanks thanks so much for being so uh inspiring and awesome as well you know you, you deserve i think a lot of credit for being a really positive force in this community too uh with the work that you do and the encouragement you give others too so thank you christopher i appreciate that um okay <laughs> you ran out of tea melissa did ya too much here we go uh, glowing pants. There you go. Duty free. All the jokes. Here we go. Kyber crystals. Yes. Charles Stevens. Hey, Charles. How are you? Wonder if you could do a three D print of other characters to put on that. I think absolutely you could. Again, you could do a get a. They have clear resin prints. They got and it, and these are, you know, um, what size are they? The one six scale. So they are. Son of a bitch. Yeah. They're about three. This is about three inches. Three inches? Really? Yeah. Three inches. Huh. The plot's smaller. So about these are about <laughs> Shut up. I know what you're gonna say. Uh this is a three inch figure, so you can totally if you had a uh, a 3D resin printer for sure. You could uh, you could even uh, model in the 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 layer lines, All right? FDM. You could totally do that. You could do Obi Wan Kenobi. You could do Yoda. You could do anybody. You you know, the 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 only limit is your imagination and your technical skill, perhaps. So there you go. Oh man, here we go. That's what she said. About three inches. Here we go. Hey, BC Dora and other movie cars. How you doing, Brandon? It's great to see ya. Great to see ya. Uh, man, Christopher. Maybe I could print a Carson Teva, and that could be a hollow image. Absolutely, you could. King Dog. Everybody in my house watches Kim's Convenience. Thank you so much for saying that. Bitter Trolls in the basement here. Do Captain Kirk just to mess with people. I'd like that. You should do somebody. You should do Baltar from Battlestar Galacta. John Colicos. From the original 1979 series. I think that would be pretty dope as well. 
uh, what is what's happened here? Uh, it'd be perfect, you know, Mike saying here, Mike from Battle with Me is saying it would be perfect use for PLA printer because the scan lines would be built in. Yes, but could you get it hot? Like, do they have clear filament? I don't think they do. I think that's the only thing. They have clear resin, and I know you can do that, but I don't know if you could uh, do that with an F FDM printer. Do Admiral Akbar and glue it to Mousetrap. It's a trap! <laughs> That's fun. That'd be a good one. That's a good one. Okay, so that is, wow. Wait, R2-D2, uh, let's, actually, you know what? Let's use the restraining bolt to open him up as well. And then, once we get done with R2, let's, uh, let's move on to the Dunuo Novo Luke Skywalker X-Wing Pilot Helmet. And I've been waiting for that. I've had that on pre-order through Onovo, it's a different company, for three years. And as some of you may know, Onovo went bankrupt and were replaced by another company called Denuo Novo. And a lot of people in the community, once bitten, twice shy, were all like, it sounds the same. It's the same company. It's a big Ponzi scheme. Don't trust them. And uh, I think a lot of people were kind of like, meh. Yeah, they'd been burned and they were pissed. Uh, but the new Novo, I have to say, has come through for me. They, uh, I'll talk about this later. R2-D2, here is his restraining, restraining bolt. There you go. And on the back of it is a magnet. And the magnet is used to open, come on, open doors. Open. There we go. So this is where a lot of these accessories get plugged into, and that's a it's a pretty ingenious way of opening these doors. They've got a little metal metal bit on it that helps the magnet grab and open some of these doors. And so, and they're all in the instructions on which doors open and whatnot. And these are fun. And then at the end of the day. You can just take this restraining bolt and stick it to the main body. And uh, yeah, as you can see, there are, come on, focus, little holes where the, uh, where the extra arms can go into and, and uh, there you go, that's his R2's little periscope right that's spring-loaded it just pops right back in same thing with the there's a port for the lightsaber right there that's a you click it down and move it out of the way that's very similar to the sideshow one as well right which is really cool um, yeah. Now this R2, the Sideshow Deluxe R2. Does it's the same thing with with the restraining bolt. The restraining bolt that comes with the Sideshow one's much smaller, but the magnet is bigger. Come on. It's a much smaller restraining bolt. And, um, yeah, the lights are activated. It's a touch thing, if I remember correctly. That's how uh, you turned them on and off, the lights. Or till the batteries die. Whichever comes first. Anywho, so that's it. That, is, that was the, uh, the deluxe R2-D2 Hot Toys edition of the uh, classic R2 <laughs> rooster. You fell asleep? Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Uh, M. Mueller, hey, welcome to the channel. That R2, he's an intimidating fellow. Uh, this is an awesome one six scale version of R2-D2. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the 20th anniversary one. Uh, will, he, will he come with rockets so he could fly on his legs? I'm pretty sure he will. 
So I'm looking forward to that release whenever it does come out. Uh, it's being announced fairly soon. I would imagine on May the 4th. Uh, but uh, this is a fantastic one. I love the die cast. I love the remote control for the lights. Right. And the sound. There you go. So that, uh, and um, yeah, this is, a, I'm really, really glad I was able to find this and get it for a, a fairly decent price. So again, uh, this is an aftermarket. They, he's not available on, on shelves anymore. I had to go hunt him down, pay a little bit more than what he was uh, originally on sale for, I'm sure. Uh, but again, that's that's the beauty of these these collectibles is they are uh, they are when they first come out they're not incredibly hard to get your hands on, but once they've been out for a while they are harder and that's that's what I love as a collector that's that's how it kind of should be when the first wave gets released they're available everywhere and then everybody buys them and uh, that that causes that scarcity but uh, I'm happy to have him welcome to the collection buddy and uh, I'm sure you get along with everybody. That's it, R2-D2, deluxe version from Hot Toys. Highly recommend it if you can find it for a decent price. Okay. Wow, that was fun. That was fun. It was kind of old school the way we did it, just because I haven't... What I'm noticing the difference between the Geeky Basement and the West Coast Stash House is the West Coast Stash House, I have a very big table. And so I'm able to sort of, you know, uh, get that overhead cam and do that side by side. This it's very much more confined here. Um, it's more intimate down here, but the display is so much better than West Coast Stash House. <laughs> uh, okay, so here we go. Nah, Tommy, Art like Podrick could not care less about any noise that comes from any electronic device. Trust me, I've tried to FaceTime him from Vancouver. He just doesn't care. He doesn't care. Okay, yes, that's right, Bitter Troll. Geeky Basement is home. And that's why I love it here. But that being said, there are a number of things that I can learn from and grow with in this basement. Uh, lessons learned from being at the West Coast Stash House uh, and uh, things that have inspired me. So, as a wonderful segue, things that inspire me, uh, I'm going to talk now about uh, this that just came in through the mail. Uh, again, this came through uh, three years ago. There was a company called the Novos, and they specialized in, uh, they had Star Wars license, and their big thing were Star Wars helmets. Now, you can see a number of them behind me that I ordered, and as you can tell, I really love the quality of them. So I've got this the standard TK, that's the uh, tank trooper from Rogue One, that's the dirty variant up there, dirty as in like battle worn. Uh, there's the uh, ACT, uh, AT ACT driver helmet. Um, I've got the the uh, incinerator trooper helmet. A clean variant of the uh, tank trooper. First order TK. Uh, we've got a shore trooper. First order tie pilot. And uh, right there's the Mandalorian season one helmet. I've also got a couple of Darth Vaders from them. And uh, yeah, so I loved Anovas just because they had. Uh, High resolution copies, they did scans of screen used helmets. And so as a, a replica prop builder and a collector, whenever you hear the term screen accurate or scan from, from actual uh, set assets from used in the movies, that's like a siren song. And um, this is something that I really kind of got into and I really, really enjoyed. And um, yeah, I got into collecting. And so at the time, Inovos was doing really, really well. They had high quality products at a, you know, premium prices, but nothing too overboard. Uh, and so I was lucky and I ordered, as you can see, a number of items that I never had an issue until they started getting a little bit, they started running into supply issue problems and quality control problems and everything started to get delayed. And eventually what they ended up doing was they were taking, they were making pre-orders and taking orders from people for items that weren't yet produced. Uh, and they were saying, hey, pay for it and you'll get yours, you'll, you'll be guaranteed yours you know, when it does come out. 
And uh, they use that pre-order money. Instead of using it to, to build what people have paid for, they were using that money to fulfill older orders that uh, they were falling behind on it. So it came, became kind of like a pyramid scheme. They just started running out. Like This, this is the sense that I get from it. And um, they just kept falling further and further behind. And so people's pre-orders, like, I ordered this Luke Skywalker X-Wing pilot helmet three years ago. Um, and I never got it. And I kept waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, same thing with a couple, for a couple of other items, like the, the Mandalorian helmet, the Darth Vader helmet. Uh, there was a three big items, and they were not cheap. They were like 500 bucks American for them at the time. The, the Luke Skywalker one was, because it was a pre-sale order item, it was 350 American. So, you know, it was a substantial amount of money, but something that I was able to, um, to absorb. Because what eventually happened was, Novos just went out of business. They, they weren't able to fulfill their orders. Everybody started getting mad. And uh, they kind of made matters worse because they got a license with Galaxy's Edge to, um, uh, and, and some of the other feature films as well to produce assets to be used you know, for the film and stuff. And they used all the pre-order money and stuff to, to sort of do that. So like everybody who ordered, for example, a first order TK uh, armor kit, right? And never got it. If you go to Galaxy's Edge, you can see where all the money went for that because there's like a hundred first order TK uh, armor kits over there. So they use that to sort of, uh, um, you know, fulfill their, their, their contract with Lucasfilm for those franchises. But the fans kind of got left out in the cold. About a half year ago, eight months ago, Denuo Novo stepped in. And basically Denuo Novo is a new company and they are... Uh, and I've talked about this before. Um, they are made up of Ruby's Costuming Company, which is a budget-conscious costuming company. Um, the, Ruby's is is ubiquitous with budget cosplay, and their stuff is great. It's not 100% screen accurate, but it's close enough to the mark that if you don't know the intimacies of anything, you kind of go, "Oh yeah, that's a Ghostbuster," or "Oh, you're from Star Wars," or this or that. Um, they're they're good enough to pass basic inspection. You just look at them, and go, you can tell what they are, where they're from. Um, and uh, NECA, which is another toy company, the North uh, North American Entertainment Collections Association or something, they produce a lot of high-end, higher-end uh, uh, six-inch figures. So if you see my McCready um, uh, six-inch figure from, from The Thing, that's NECA. Uh, NECA also does like the, the 40th anniversary of Alien those six inch figures and NECA does you know all these great franchises the horror franchises as well and they produce a really really solid adult collectible six inch scale figure so you've got these two big companies they're merging together they're under one umbrella to do premium costuming and they rename it and I think this was the biggest mistake they renamed it Denuo Novo which sounded too close to a Novos so whoever was ripped off by a Novos was basically saying you know what forget it Forget it, Anovos. I know it's you. It's a it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. You're never ever going to get my money again. I think that was the first the the biggest mistake that they made. Now, what they did, what the new Anovos did was they said they reached out to the community who was pissed off and said, anybody who had a Star Wars pre-order with us that wasn't fulfilled, send us your information and we will honor those pre-orders. They didn't have to do that. They didn't have to do that whatsoever. They took over the license from Anovos. They took on all that debt. They took on all the pre-orders for Star Wars that they could get. And they made a promise to fulfill those orders. And lo and behold, they started going out. I reached out and said, hey, you know what? For me, that money's lost. So it doesn't hurt for me to reach out and say, hey, you owe me this, you owe me that. Where is it? So they sent me um, their version of the Mandalorian helmet. Now that's from a Novos that I bought on the secondary market through a private seller. So that's an actual Novos helmet. But Tunuo Novo sent me one as well. And at first glance, they're almost identical. They're almost, there's slight differences to them. The new Novo, um, they are, they use less material, right? To make it a little bit cheaper. Um, but it's it's pretty close. And they shave, they shave, they shave. They saved on shipping cost because uh, Anovos used to send out their helmets in a shipper box 
with a styrofoam case with the helmet packed inside of it with a bag and uh, it was totally protected and had some great art. Dinuo Novo sent a shipper box filled with foam peanuts and the helmet was in a sack. So you lost out on a bit of the, you know, the, the, the flash uh, of, of Anovos, but you got your stuff. And so they were fulfilling orders for all the Star Wars stuff. And the stuff that they weren't making, they were giving credit for. Uh, so they said, hey, look, if there's something else in our catalog that you would like, you can have that in, instead. Now, I know I hear Anovos, they also had Battlestar Galactica license. They had the Star Trek license. They also did, uh, they had some Marvel stuff as well, and now all that stuff is still in limbo. But from what I hear, they're trying to fulfill those as well. The thing is, they need the licensing rights to be able to do that. So uh, anybody who has a Star Trek order that is outstanding with them, you know, that money's already gone. But hey, you never know. Keep those orders that you have on file for the, for the Star Trek stuff. And maybe one day they'll be able to say, hey, we're doing it. Give us your pre-orders and we'll fulfill them. You never know. So, um, hey, Bearded Builds. How are you? Hope you're doing well, Peter. It's good to see you on the boards. Uh, so, lo and behold, this came the other day. Well, maybe about two weeks ago, but I was back in Vancouver. I got my Rogue One Luke Skywalker X-Wing Pilot helmet. And uh, I have to say, it came in a box very much like the old Novos days, in a, you know, in a styrofoam container, which is great. This is the top half of it, the bottom, top half of it. And uh, it came, where is it? Very much like the Anovos used to, right? It had the Anovos, anybody who's had them, they, you know, came with the Star Wars case, and then it had the art on top. The only difference was the Denuo Novo lo logo instead of the Anovos logo. So I, as soon as I opened it, I was like, wow, this, this took me back. This is back to the heyday of when Anovos was at the height of its power and popularity. So I got this helmet and I have to say, uh, it's very light. Um, you know, it's, it's very, it's accurate to how the, the helmets were made because it was all just ABS plastic poles. It's not a fiberglass helmet. It's ABS plastic that's been pulled. The uh, weathering details on it, the paint job isn't too bad i mean it's a bit i mean when you look at it a little up close it could be better it could be better but i mean certainly it pass passes mustard from far away uh it came with really really nice padding this is premium padding what i would expect from it uh the inside is lined and they had extra pads as well uh the only thing quibble i might have is with this with the mic cable here, this it's a bit cheap and loosey-goosey, but what I like about this is, it fits, fits like a glove. It's good, now I've got the padding in here. There we go. This is all, do I have it all crooked? There we go. I got the padding in here, and um, yeah, this is this is actually a, a little bit smaller than the one that I cosplay with that I got from Darth Hare. Uh, the Mohawk is more screen accurate; it's, it's a little bit lower down, but it's comfy. It's comfy, uh, and it's it's like this is not the same helmet that I had on the Mandalorian. Lucasfilm has that; it's back there, but it's the same style of it. And I'm going to say right now, I have here as well, this is a Black Series version of the helmet. Now, Black Series is produced by Hasbro. Uh, they are, they have a, they, they have their own sort of uh, helmet line that they've come out. And I have a number of Black Series helmets. I've got a Darth Vader, Boba Fett, Boba Fett prototype, Boba Fett from the Book of Boba Fett or, uh, or Mandalorian Season 2 repaint. They've got a cost, uh, not a Costco Reeves, a Bo Katan that's coming out. I got my Wedge Antilles over there, uh, a Poe Dameron as well. So they have a whole whack of them, including First Order Stormtroopers, Captain Cardinal, and whatnot. So this is the Black Series version of it that Hasbro released, and it came out and is about $99. Uh, 
uh, when it first came out. These are a little bit more rare now, so you'll find them about $165 to $200 now. Brand new inbox. Uh, it's got electronics in it, so you can switch between Battle of Yavin and Battle of Hoth through it. But the thing is, it's... It's small and it's tight and it feels like it's... Now I can remove this padding if I wanted to uh, and sort of just, but it feels like somebody's squeezing my head. That's, that's how tight. And this is much heavier than this because this is not, this is not, I mean, this is hard plastic. It's not ABS plastic. It's thick sort of plain plastic. You can see that the, the paint apps, the difference between the two right so this one just looks a little bit more like it's been through the ringer uh the visors themselves this visor has a different is much bigger and a different tint this is more orange this is more yellow which is a bit more screen accurate uh the one thing i do like about this is the mic is very this cable here is very hardy i like that i like the fact that it is in here right this has chin straps. I just didn't put them on, but uh, Ernie, I this is a thing that I want to. I'm gonna fight for. If I ever get back into the cockpit of an X-wing, I'm gonna say I hate these chin cups. And when I was, you know, for for Mando season two, they said no, all they, that's canon. They all have them in there. And uh, I recently, not recently, I found a picture of Jack Porkins and of Gold Leader, and they have their chin cups hanging off the side. So if, if I'm ever back on set for The Mandalorian or, or from a, uh, if I'm ever like behind the, in a cockpit for an X-Wing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lobby for that and say, it's canon. I can have the chin cup to the side and it won't squish up my beard and it won't make my cheeks look fat. Because, you know, if you're an X-Wing pilot, it's all about how you look. So this is, see, so this fits beautifully. This fits beautifully, and I, I like that. And you know, this is this is dope. This is dope. If I'm cosplaying with this, I'm not gonna get tired. I'm not gonna get head neck fatigue because this is super light. It's great. So the new Onovo, um, yeah, love it. Great job on this. Uh, makes me interested in the other X-wing pilot helmets that they have. They have General Merc. You can check them out denuonovo.com. But and is a big but these are super expensive now they are now i think the cheapest one was 575 dollars and they go up to i know the kylo ren they have one that's like 900 bucks us they're expensive and i think they're expensive for a reason they're expensive because a they will fulfill these orders but b because they are honoring all the anovos previous anovos pre-orders and they're not going to absorb those costs they're going to pass them on to other people who want these helmets but these helmets are again like a novos they are other based on the same model which are based on the same scans of screen used assets so uh and, and again that that's how they get you that's how they get you they know for the new novo they they're, they're selling officers uniforms now line officer staff officer for the imperial uh navy and army uh they have a han solo the vest the pants the shirt again but it's expensive and for that kind of money too, you're almost better off and you could probably get it cheaper if you got a tailor to hand make something specifically to your size. So just saying, but check out their site. Check out their site. If you if you got too much time and uh, you uh, if you don't have that much time and you have uh, the funds for it, I can wholeheartedly, um, you know, recommend the new Novo in terms of the quality of the stuff that I, I've gotten from them. Uh, again, that Mandalorian helmet, it's lighter than this Anovos one, same build, just slightly less material. I think the fiberglass is just a little bit thinner, but that makes it easier for cosplaying. So, that's what I'm saying. What is? What are you saying, Ernie? What are you saying? I don't look flattering with my chin strap on. Instead, I get asked, sir, can you breathe? Are you joking? <laughs> I love you, man. I love you so much. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, well, that's all I have for today. Uh, next week, I'm going to be back in Vancouver. I'm going to be flying back on the 7th, uh, 9th. It's going to be super-sized. 
edition of Fun Boxing Sundays. It'll be our 40th episode. Lordy, lordy, look who's got 40 episodes. Um, I am really, really looking forward to that. Uh, it's going to be supersized in many ways. I've got uh, my SOC gang going to be joining me, hopefully. Uh, I'm talking Ryan. Everybody remembers Ryan Dole from the last supersized episode. Uh, Brandon, of course, from BC DeLorean. He's going to be bringing out his gear again because we've got some humongous things to unbox. And I'm talking toys, like actual collectible toys, not whatever your mind went to because I know all y'all very immature and I wouldn't have it any other way. And also special guest starring will be my buddy Steve, Steve 3, who's usually on these boards. He's going to be joining us. You will see the original SOC gang out there. Um, that's right, the Sons of Culture, we're going to be out here and uh, we're going to be having a lot of fun. There's going to be trivia, there's going to be giveaways and uh, we're going to be uh, unboxing some tremendous things. Uh, there's a Disney Parks exclusive that I am going to be unboxing next week as well as something huge uh, from uh, Haya as well. And I think a lot of you, I already, did I? I already told you all about it, what's going on, but I uh, want to keep that. And 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 other beautiful things to unbox. Got a super chat from my, my dear friend, Robert Donatel from, from Oakland, 1999, thank you, for $20, thank you so much. He writes, thank you so much for sharing another Sunday with us despite everything going on. Much love to your Appa and hopes for his comfort through all this, cheers all. Thank you so much. This is, uh, it means a lot, Robert. It really means a lot. And uh, I can only, I can only, um, yeah, I can only be completely humbled and grateful for, uh, for everybody's support on this. Uh, Tom, I'm not seeing any of the, uh, the milestone chats. No, uh, I'm at home, so it might not be showing up on this board. Oh, you know what? It's showing up on the, the YouTube boards, uh, which I had in the background. So, yeah, we have a number of milestones. Tom, 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 member for eight months. How does your screen helmet fit tight or is it perfectly sized? Um, the screen helmet one that I have for Mandalorian is, um, it's a little restrictive. Not gonna lie, it's a little bit tight, but that's because they have a mic, they had a mic and all these other electronics packed into it, uh, but, I don't notice it. It's it's not as tight as the Black Series. How's that? And thank you so much for being a member for, for eight months. Um, and uh, yeah, again, Robert, man, I really, really appreciate your support, man. Thank you. Uh, next time I'm I'm out west in Oakland, let's, honestly, let's hook up. Let's have, let's have a beer or a drink or a lunch. Let's share a meal together. I'd really, really love that. Uh, we'll be in touch. Um, Battle with me and Mike. Hey. Gonna try getting this in again real quick uh, before the embitteration duty. Can you share what that Y wing is behind me? Ah, yes. <laughs> I got this for Christmas from from Miles. This was a gift. This is from Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. This is Zori Bliss's Y wing. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, it's kind of, it's been down here, so it's, there we go. Haven't put the craggle on it yet. But there it is, and she's in here. Forgive the dust. I haven't been home for a while. Uh, but there is, okay. Sorry, Bliss, inside of her Y-wing. The dust just makes it look more screen accurate. That's great weathering right there, yeah. So this is a Lego set that I got. with the instructions still uh, for Christmas from my youngest, Little Mouse Smiles. It's great, it's got missiles and proton torpedoes that fires out of it and it drops little bombs as well, which is cool. So I'm just sort of keeping it here out of trouble. All right. Okay, so again, to all of you, thank you so much. Um, this is a, uh, this has been a salve for me. This this brings me up when I'm feeling down. So I, I appreciate all of you. Uh, I love all of you. Thank you so much. May 8th, it's Mother's Day. Say hi to your mom. Give your mom a squeeze if you can. Um, if your mom's still around and those of you without moms, uh, I'll give you a hug. I like, this is, I, it's, it's complicated. These, those days are complicated and um, 
but uh, you know, let, let's hang out May 8th, unbox some really cool toys, have a good time. Let's make fun of make, make, make fun of the fact that we love opening toys and we're gonna hang out and have a good time, right? And we'll make fun of Ryan too, because he's fun. Uh, but in the meantime, please take care of yourselves, hug your loved ones. Um, don't take him for granted. Uh, time is precious. And uh, let the ones closest to you know how much they mean to you. Um, and you all mean a lot to me too. So thanks so much for this. We'll see you next Sunday. Take care of yourselves. Be kind to yourselves. And uh, yeah, may the force be with you. Okay, see you. And I, I can't find the end card. So... I'm just going to go. Oh, that figures. That figures so hard. And we broke 100 likes. May 8th, you might be. Okay. Okay, May 8th. Bye, everyone.